This video is going to be about the Bernoulli distribution. We're going to go over the properties first, and then a quick example. Then I'll introduce a mathematical representation of the Bernoulli distribution, which goes by the general name of density function. So really, this is the density function of the Bernoulli distribution. And then we're going to plot the density function in R. So the properties are not too bad. We'll go over them quickly, just as a recap. Only two outcomes. So the Bernoulli distribution is a process that generates data, and the data only take on the values 0 and 1. There exists some probability of observing a 1. We call that probability p, and it lives in the interval of real numbers 0 to 1. And no two outcomes are related. So a over-the-top crazy example that I could give you is imagine we as students are gathered before our online Zoom session. We're all starting up our computers and trying to log on to Zoom. And then if you're on a Windows machine, boom, it gives you one of those forced restart screens. You know what? the probability of you being a Windows user and seeing a forced restart screen is, well, I don't actually know what it is, but it doesn't matter. There is some probability, if you're on a Windows machine, that you're going to see the forced restart screen just before you can log on to class. And you know what? There's only two outcomes. Either you see that screen, one, or you don't. And you know what? Because all of your computers are... Uh, not related in any way, there are no two outcomes that are going to be related. So a quick example of a Bernoulli distribution is each student in my class, some probability of P of them seeing the forced restart screen on their Windows machine just before logging into Zoom for class time. There's only two outcomes. There's some probability, and no two outcomes are related. The Bernoulli distribution is a perfect fit for that. The only thing we really hope of is that it's a small probability that you get stuck in a forced restart just before logging into class. Now, that was the silliest example I could come up with. Okay, next up, the density function. of the Bernoulli distribution. So the density function is the name of a mathematical representation of a distribution. Now, in this case, because we're looking at the density function of the Bernoulli distribution, we're going to have the density function that is the specific representation of the Bernoulli distribution. Now, if you recall, there's two key facts about the Bernoulli distribution. There's two properties of it. There's only two outcomes. So we're going to say there is some variable x of our function such that x is in the set consisting of 0 and 1 and no other values. And we have some p in 0 to 1, which is a subset of the real numbers. So what we want out of this representation, where we have some function, which we're going to call the density function, and because it pertains to the Bernoulli distribution, it'll be specifically the density function of the Bernoulli distribution. 
that takes some variable x given, that's what this pipe is to mean, the probability p. And what we want to get out of this are the probabilities associated with a particular value of x. Okay, so just bear with me on this one. The density function for the Bernoulli distribution looks like this. That is p to the x times 1 minus p, the entire quantity, to the power of 1 minus x. At first, that looks really nasty, but remember, x can only take on two values, 0 and 1. So what you should do is spend some time looking at f at 1. Okay, well, f at 1, no matter what value of p it is, goes like this. p to the power of 1 is just p. And 1 minus p to the power of 1 minus 1 is, okay, so the power is 0. Anything to the power of 0 is just 1. Oh, so funny that the density function at 1, for, given some value of p, is just p. You remember how I said p is the probability of observing a 1? Here's the connection right there through this mathematical representation of the Bernoulli distribution. This function is describing the pattern that we see in the data. 1 shows up with probability p. Okay, I'm going to leave it to you to evaluate the density function at 0. I think from here, it would be helpful if we try to visualize the density function. And we have r at our disposal to do that. So we'll just jump into r right now. I'm going to pick some probability that is not 0.5 to make this example a little bit more fun. I'm first going to declare a variable named p. Then going to use a function named curve. Now, curve is a little bit more uh, powerful a tool than we actually need right now. But curve is going to be our friend much later on throughout the semester. So I'm just going to start us early with you know, the heavy lifting tools here. So the first argument to curve is going to be the density function. So we can just type that out in what looks like basic math notation, but turns out to actually be R code. Now, curve, as you can see in the pop-up, takes a few more arguments. We're only going to choose some of those. We're going to specify the values x starts at, and because the Bernoulli distribution starts at 0 and goes up to 1, we're going to specify those. And n is how many values we want to evaluate x at. Turns out just two, really, just the values 0 and 1. The next thing we need is type to be equal to p. If you don't specify it, it gets set to l, but we don't want lines. We want points, so we're going to specify p, and that should be enough to get us started. Now, I'm not here to tell you that this is a pretty plot, but it is a functional plot. It does the trick. x on the x-axis only takes on two values, 0 and 1, and the probability associated with 1 is, oh, look at that, 0.75, just like we specified it. So what I want you to notice here is that this notation that we used mathematically is like saying, first, pick a value of p. That is, given that value of p, we have a function in the variable x. And so this idea, by setting p first and then having the function, should help you understand this notation. It essentially says there is a density function named f, depends on the variable x, condition on some specified value of p. OK, so you can really easily re let's change it up totally, reuse this code. And you can see the plot totally changes for you. I'm going to encourage you to fix this plot up a little bit. Some things I would like to do to make it look a little bit better are set PCH to 20. All that's going to do is fill in the points, but I think it looks nicer that way. 
I'm going to set the y limits of the plot to go from 0 to 1, because it helps me better understand that these are probabilities bounded between 0 and 1. And I'm going to set the y-axis label to be f of x given p. If you don't know how to get this pipe on your keyboard, you hold shift and then hit the button above enter and to the right of the square and curly brace button. So hold shift and hit the button above enter and to the right of the square bracket and curly brace button. So I'm going to make that plot in there, and I think that looks much better. So you all should take a little minute. Pick a value of p that you're interested in. I'll go ahead and pick my favorite value of p for a probability. And this should help you understand that the density function is really represents an entire family of distributions. This one density function represents an entire family of distributions. The family is indexed by this value p. Whatever you change p to, your function is going to appropriately change. Because p can take on any real number in the interval inclusive 0 to inclusive 1, you actually have an uncountably infinite number of density functions for each new value of p you could choose. If you don't believe me, consider that this density function that I just represented on the plot below is for this value of p. Now, if I only changed one single number in this sequence, of this decimal expansion, I'd get a whole new density function. That's pretty crazy. OK, just to make this a little bit more fun, let's see if we can generate some data and try to estimate this value of p. So I'm just going to go quick here. Uh, let's start at 10. OK, I'm going to estimate p, so I'm going to put on my guessing hat. I'm going to call it p hat. I'm going to estimate p based solely on the data x. Because I only have 10 observations, my guess is somewhat close, but not super close. But what I can do is add to my plot using points. So on the x-axis, I'm interested in the two values 0 and 1. On the y-axis, I'm interested in 1 minus p hat associated with the value 0. And on the uh, second position, I'm interested in p hat associated with the value 1. Let's change the color a little bit so that we can see the difference between the points that will show up based on this and these black points known to be the true values. Look how cool that is. And because this is our code and we are typing it in to the uh, file up here instead of into the console, we can just completely run through all of this. I'd like you to take a minute to play around with this. See how good your estimate does of this true probability as you change your sample size. Run this code a few times with a relatively small sample size and then slowly increase your sample size. And each time you increase your sample size, change, uh, see how the circles, the estimates, get close to the true values. See what happens as your sample size increases. Each time you change your sample size, generate a few more plots and observe what happens. And if at any point you don't uh, you like lose track of the points. It might help for you to stick this plot here. So now you'll get a new plot every time. No orange dots until you run that last line of code. Ooh, that's a good one. OK, I'd like you to play around with this. Slowly increase the sample size each time and see what happens from your estimates calculated using only the data and see if they are good or bad estimates of this true probability that you know exists. 
This was our introduction to the Bernoulli distribution. Well, it wasn't really an introduction. This was a full-on go of the Bernoulli distribution, inclusive of the mathematical representation, which we call the density function. Here it is in math writing, and here is the definition of the density function. Then we gave a visual representation of the density function. Hopefully that gives us two ways now to understand the Bernoulli distribution.